It's the grandson of Right Thought. Welcome to the School of Marvelous Life. I hope all of you are well, little flock. You wheat. <laughs> you beautiful sons and daughters of the Most High Yah. Thank y'all for being here at the School of Marvelous Life. And I pray that all is well with all of you. I am healthy. I am energized. I am ready. I am rejuvenated. I am courageous. I am dedicated. I am confident. So I pray the same for all of you today, this morning. We're going to read from the Wisdom of Solomon. Now, a lot of you in your Bibles won't have this book. You would need a 1611 King James Version, or you would need an Apocrypha. Either way, we're going to read from it today so we can get some wisdom about our circumstances that we find ourselves in. More so about the fact that there are two groups on this earth. There are not many, many, many groups. There are just two. The righteous and the unrighteous. The wheat and the tares. The goats and the sheep. The light and the dark. You see? There are good messengers and then there are messengers of lies and deceits. So, in the wisdom of Solomon, we're going to read about the differences between the two and how they think, what their goals are each day, what their motivations are, so that you can understand your enemy and not be ignorant of his devices. So we'll start from the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1. We'll start at verse 1. All right. All right. Verse 1. Love righteousness, love right thinking, you that be judges of the earth, interesting, judges of the earth, think of Abba Yah with a good heart, and in simplicity of heart, seek him, just like a child does their parent, mama why this, daddy why this, daddy why that, that is seeking your father or your mother with a good pure heart, you see, and simple. Simple heart. Two, for he will be found of them that tempt him not. Now, do not tempt the Lord thy God. Do you guys understand that, what that means? To not tempt. So what do you think that means? That means you're going to God like, hey God, you want a shot of this liquor? <laughs> you're like, hey God, you want to go down to the, uh, the hostel and get some harlots? <laughs> do you think that's what it means about tempt him? No. Tempting God means... You're testing to see if what he has told you is actually true by looking for some sign or some type of proof. Then you'll believe what he told you. That's tempting him. It's, it means not trusting him. Requiring that he prove himself to you. That is tempting him. You see? Abba Yah don't need to prove himself to nobody. Through his grace and mercy he has revealed himself to us. But he doesn't have to. You see? So through faith we seek him because that is what's pleasing. Not looking for something that we say, okay, now we believe him because we saw something outside of him that, that, that proves that he exists. So now we believe him. That's tempting God, you see? And showeth himself unto such as do not distrust him. See? He shows himself to those who actually trust him, who trust his word. 100% in their hearts and he knows whether you do or not. Three, for forward, forward thoughts separate from God. Forward, naughty, mischievous, going away from, that's what fro word means. You're going away from truth. You're going away from love. Those thoughts that go away from truth and love will separate you from God. That's simple. So if you find yourself separated from God, why are you? Because of your own forward thoughts. 
your own naughty, wicked thoughts. That's why. And his power, those thoughts will separate you not only from God, but will separate you from his power, which is love. See, when it is tried, reproveth the unwise and his power, when it is tried, it reproveth the unwise. You see, corrects them for into a malicious soul. Wisdom shall not enter. You hear that? So if you're harboring maliciousness in your heart towards another brother or another sister or even yourself, then wisdom will not enter into you, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. Wisdom will not dwell in your body. You see where it's at? In a body that is subject to sin. For the Holy Spirit of discipline, y'all see that word, which a lot of people can't stand, is discipline. Staying consistent in something that you desire to gain you a result from. You're staying consistent until you get that result. That's discipline. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. And it will remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when wrong thinking cometh in. See how I said the thoughts? How I told you unrighteousness and righteousness is right thought and wrong thought. You see that? How it's explaining it to you right here in the wisdom of Solomon, the wisdom of the grandson of Jesse? See? For wisdom is a loving spirit. It's a what kind of spirit, y'all? Loving. And will not acquit a blasphemer of his words. For El is witness of his reigns. See? The judge, the judger of the heart and the reins. And a true beholder of his heart. Look at this. And a hearer of his tongue. So what did I tell you? Listen to his words and what he does. What does Abba do? Abba is a witness of his reigns and a true beholder of his heart. What he does. And a hearer of his tongue. His words. See? For the spirit of Abba Yah fills the world. And that which contains all things has knowledge of the voice. The word. Therefore he that speaketh unrighteous things cannot be hid neither shall vengeance when it punisheth pass by him you see that pass by who the one who speaks unrighteous things you see nine for inquisition shall be made into the counsels of the ungodly and the sound of his words shall come unto the abaya for the manifestation of his wicked deeds for the ear of jealousy hears all things, and the noise of murmurings is not hid. Therefore beware of murmuring, complaining, which is unprofitable, which does not pay you, just like I've been saying in my other videos. And refrain your tongue from backbiting, for there is no word so secret that shall go for naught, and the mouth that belieth slayeth the souls so he says beware of complaining murmuring backbiting you see for every word there's a reason it has an effect in other words words are the causes come on the word is the cause what is the effect it depends on the word what does he say the tongue life and death the power of life and death is in the tongue. You see that? Your words. 12. Seek not death in the error of your life and pull not upon yourselves destruction with the works of your hands. Don't destroy yourself. For God made not death. Did you hear that? What have I told you guys from the beginning? Death is not a thing of its own. It is an effect from a cause. It must be produced from something else. So in itself, it does not exist. Let's read that again. For God made not death, neither has he pleasure in the destruction of the living. See that? For he created all things that they may have their being. And the generations of the world were healthful. I am healthy. Truth. And there is no poison of destruction in them, nor the kingdom of death upon the earth. For righteousness, right thinking, is immortal. <laughs> immortal. 
I can't die so you niggas can't kill me. Yeah. I can't lie, no you bitches can't heal me. Yeah. You see it in my eyes so you niggas gon' feel me. Even if you lie, I'ma still be the real me. Yeah, yeah. You see? Immortal. But ungodly men with their works and words called it to them. Called what to them? Death! I told you! Brought upon it themselves. With what? Their works and words. See? I am sick. Then they drink a, a, some more liquor. My doctor says if I keep drinking, I'm going to die. You keep drinking more, work, more liquor. That's works. And then you say, I'm dying. I'm sick. Those are your words. Now you're calling death to you. Why? You're ungodly. For when they thought to have it their friend, they consumed to naught and made a covenant with it. A covenant with death. Is that not in the scriptures? They made a covenant with death? Because they are worthy to take part with it. They are worthy of death. Wow. Wow. Chapter 2, verse 1. For the ungodly, listen to this. It's going to tell you about the tares and the ungodly people around you. What are they saying in their hearts? He's going to expose it. Let's see. For the ungodly, the tares, the wicked, the bastards... They said reasoning with themselves, not with Abba's word, but reasoning with themselves, but not aright. See, our life is short and tedious. And in the death of a man, there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. How in the hell can they say that when there's a man named Yahusha? No man has returned from the grave. Lazarus, come forth. No man has returned from the grave. I give my life and I take it up again. No man has returned from the grave. Look at the liars reasoning with themselves but not aright. For we are born at all adventure and we shall be hereafter as though we had never been. This is what they're saying. For the breath in our nostrils is as smoke. And a little spark in the moving of our heart, which being extinguished, our body shall be turned into ashes and our spirit shall vanish as the soft air. That shit ain't true. The spirit can't be destroyed. The spirit can't die. And our name shall be forgotten in time and no man shall have our works in remembrance and our life shall pass away as the trace of a cloud and shall be dispersed as a mist that is driven away with the beams of the sun and overcome with the heat thereof. So what are they saying? They're saying our life is nothing anyway. It's just a short little time. We only got a short little time in the sun. Five, let's continue. For our time is very is a very shadow, see, that passes away. It's quick. That's what the wicked are saying. They're saying we ain't got but a short time. You see, what does it say about the wicked? He knows he has but a short time. Look at this. And after our end, there is no returning. Look at the lies. For it is fast sealed that no man cometh again. This is what they say. Six. Come on, therefore, listen. They say we only got a short time, so what? Come on, therefore, and let us enjoy the good things that are present. You hear this shit? All they want to do is enjoy pleasure. Drink, party, fornicate, have sex. And why? Because they only think they only got this life and that's it. Fools they are. And let us speedily use the creatures like as in youth. Look at this. Speedily, they said. Seven. Let us fill ourselves with costly wine and ointments. Listen, and let no flower of the spring pass by us. Eight, let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they be withered. Let none of us go without his part of our voluptuousness. Listen at this. They're saying, let all of us enjoy the fruits of this world. Have all the fun we can have. Fill ourselves with very expensive wine and perfumes and colognes and the good things of this world. Isn't that what they do? Let us leave tokens of our joyfulness in every place 
for this is our portion and our lot is this. So they're saying it. They're admitting it. This is all we have been given. It's this short little fun in the sun time here in this 3D world. That's all we've been given. We don't have life everlasting, see? So then what did they decide to do? Listen closely, elect. Listen to what they did to you. Listen to their plan against you because it's here. Wisdom right here. Ten. Let us oppress the poor righteous man. So you're telling me this is a premeditated plan of gang stalking against the targeted individuals? Well, isn't that what it says? Let us oppress the poor righteous man. Let us not spare the widow. Look at these wicked bastards. Let us not spare the widow, nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the aged. So they want to oppress the righteous men and women. They, want, they don't want to spare the widow. They don't reverence old, the aged. They don't reverence. So then, is this what would this be called righteous or wicked planning? 11. Let our strength be the law of justice, for that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. You see this? Nothing worth. So they're using the laws and the court systems to destroy righteous people and take their goods away. Or people that don't have understanding of the 3D world and laws and uh, legislations and things of that nature. They don't have understanding of that. So they use that against you. See? 12. Therefore, let us lie in wait for the righteous. Do you hear this or what? Let us lie in wait for the, for the righteous. Do you know what lie in wait means? <laughs> That's what they said. Let us lie in wait for the righteous because he is not for our turn and he is clean contrary to our doings. Oh, my goodness gracious. Do y'all hear this? Do you hear it? So these unrighteous are wait are lying in wait. What does lie in wait mean? plotting on the righteous and the reason why he's plotting is because he goes against what the wicked nigga do you see he upbraideth us with our offending the law <laughs> you see and objecteth to our infamy the transgressings of our education he says he's taking us to task he lets he proves that what we're doing is wrong so we can't stand that righteous nigga. This is what they feel about you. See, 13. He professes to have the knowledge of El. And he calleth himself the child of Abiyah. You see, like the grandson of right thought do. You see, I'm not just a, any grandson, guys. <laughs> you see, I'm someone's grandson. I'm Abba's grandson. Y'all understand that? I am a branch from the root. You understand that? They can't stand hearing this shit. That's what it just says. 14. He was made to reprove our thoughts. You hear that? They know it. So the elect was, was made to correct the wicked. That's what it just said. The righteous man was made to reprove our thoughts. So they know they're doing wicked. 15. He is grievous unto us. Even to behold. It is hard for the unrighteous to even look at a righteous man. For his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion. Do you hear it? Grandson of right thought. Is grievous for the wicked to behold. His life is not like other men's lives. And his ways are of another fashion. You understand this? Y'all hear this elect? We are different. 16. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. You fake ass nigga. Ain't that what we say? You fake ass niggas. Y'all don't want to be humans. Y'all are fakes. That's what the righteous man is going to say. It's right here in the word. 
He abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness. The righteous stay away from their filth. He pronounces the end of the just to be blessed and makes his boast that Abba is his father. You see? You see this? This is words of the wicked. 17. Let us see if his words be true. They said, let's find out. Let's let's test him and see. Did you know that he left? Did you know that they said, oh, you think you're righteous? Well, let me, let's find out then. Behind your back. That's what they were saying. Did you know that? And let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. See? They said, oh, this nigga say he can't die. Well, let's see. Verse 18. Watch. For if the just man be the son of God, he will help him. And deliver him from the hand of his enemies. He said, okay, so if you just and if Abba Yah love you, then Abba Yah should help you, right? He should defend you from me, huh? 19. Let us examine him with despitefulness and torture. Did you see what they said about you elect? They get together and say, let's examine him with despitefulness and torture. Since his master says that he's going to pray for those who despitefully use him, let's despitefully use him and see if he indeed does pray for us. That's how they do. And torture. That we may know his meekness and prove his patience. See? The things that he says of himself. Let's see if that's true. You niggas ain't fooling us. Y'all niggas are not fooling us with your fake ass apologies. Your fake ass uh, questioning is for how to get saved. Your fake ass humility. You're just examining us to see. That's it. Let us condemn him with a shameful death. Did you hear that, you targeted ones? They said, let us condemn him with a shameful death. For by his own saying, he shall be respected. Nigga talking about he can't die. Let's bring his ass to a shameful death and see. Didn't they do that to your master, Yahusha? They gave him a shameful death to see. And then they said it. If you be the son of God, then come down off that cross then. See? Prophesy unto us and tell us who hit you. See? They do the same thing to you. Despitefulness and torture. See? 21. Such things they did imagine. They were doing this in their hearts. They were imagining this shit against you. Look at this. And they were deceived. For their own wickedness has blinded them. Uh, 22. As for the mysteries of El, they knew them not. Neither hoped they for the wages of righteousness. See, the wages of sin are death. So what are the wages of righteousness? Huh nor discerned a reward for blameless souls. They couldn't understand it. 23. For El created man to be immortal. <coughs> oh my goodness gracious. He didn't create man to be a caterpillar. He created man to become a butterfly. Woo! And made him to be an image of his own eternity to reflect Abba Yah. What did I say in my song? Abba the light that I'm reflecting, coming out of the night that I was left in. Abba the right, Abba the, <laughs> Abba the light that I'm reflecting, coming out of the night that I was left in. I turned on the dime and got recollected. <laughs> I got reconnected. <laughs> it's about time. You see what I'm saying? Sealed by the Most High. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into this world. So how did death come? Death always was? No. Nevertheless, through envy. 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 The worst sin. Envy of the devil came death into the world. And they that do hold on his side do find it. So those who are on the side of the devil, they will surely find death. Do you hear it? Do you hear it? Do you hear it? We'll read a little bit more, and then we'll end this one. Chapter 3, Wisdom of Solomon, verse 1. But the souls of the righteous, you elect, you targeted ones, are in the hand of El, and there shall no torment touch them. So see, 
If you believe Abba, then you will not have torment. If you don't believe Abba and you still think you're going to have torment, then your ass will. But if you're right thinking, the souls of the right thinking, righteous, are in the hand of Abba. See? Two, in the sight of the unwise, they seemed to die. In the sight of the unwise, they seemed to die. And their departure is taken for misery. They think it's misery. Three, and they're going from us to be utter destruction. But they are in peace. For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. For Abba proved them, tested them, and found them worthy for himself. Oh my goodness gracious. It was all a test. As gold, verse 6, in the furnace has been tried. <laughs> he has tried them and received them as a burnt offering. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. And they shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people. And their Lord shall reign forever. They shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people. Who? The elect. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him for grace and mercy is to his saints vessels fitted for mercy and he hath care for his elect. Oh my God, do you hear what he just told you elect? Be care for you. But the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations. Whatever you have imagined is what is going to come upon your ass. What you imagined when you were gang-stalking us is what's going to come upon you, just like we've been saying. They which have neglected the righteous. Let's read that again. But the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations, which have neglected the righteous and forsaken Abba Yah, who despises wisdom and nurture he is miserable and their hope is vain and their labors are unfruitful and their works are unprofitable so whoever despises wisdom and nurture is miserable their hope is vain their labor is unfruitful the things that they do is pointless and their works are unprofitable and bring no reward their wives are foolish and their children are wicked. Look what Abba's saying about this. Their offspring is cursed. Cursed. Wherefore, blessed is the barren that is undefiled, which hath not known the sinful bed, fornication. She shall have fruit in the visitation of souls. And blessed is the eunuch, which with his hands has wrought no iniquity, nor imagined wicked things against El. For unto him shall be given the special gift of faith and an inheritance in the temple of Abba Yah, more acceptable to his mind. For glorious is the fruit of good labors and the root of wisdom shall never fall away. As for the children of adulterers, they shall not come to their perfection and the seed of an unrighteous bed shall be rooted out. For though they live long, Yet shall they be nothing regarded, and their last age shall be without honor. Or if they die quickly, verse 18, they have no hope, neither comfort in the day of trial. 19, for, the hor for horrible is the end of the unrighteous generation. And we'll stop there. We'll continue with some more wisdom at another time. But I think that's a... Enough on your plate right now for you to eat and get full all off of for the time being. So be aware of the people around you. 
that there are enemies who are constantly plotting to destroy you because you don't go with their ways, you are against their ways, you boast in the fact that you're a child of God, which they don't think you are, so they will test to see if you are. So be ready for the test. Be ready. Be prepared for everything that they throw at you because there's only a small list of things that they will throw at you. It's not a big list. Abba has already told you the devices of the devil. Lust and fornication and envy and maliciousness and all that. When you know that's what it is, then you can prepare for it so that when he comes to try to throw that shit at you, you're prepared. <laughs> you see? You know what he's throwing before he throws it. So if you're the batter and you step up to the plate and you know the pitch that's coming, it's a good chance you might smack that bitch out the park, huh? Silawa <laughs> Misraela.